We are going to reread the excerpt from The Outsiders. Let's read the questions to provide a purpose for rereading the text. Turn to page 89 in your student books. I want you to read the prompts aloud with me. Number one, describe Pony Boy's family. Number two, tell the names of the greasers. Number three, Use context to determine the meaning of this quote. We couldn't get along without him. We needed Johnny as much as he needed the gang, and for the same reason. Number four, explain Johnny's reaction to his mother's visit. Number five, describe how Johnny fits the stereotype of gang members. Number six, explain how greasers and socias are different and alike. Now turn to page 74 in your student books. In lesson one, we discussed the dialogue or who is talking. How is dialogue marked in text? Dialogue starts in the third paragraph. A paragraph usually includes the dialogue of only one character, but that isn't always the case. Read lines 119 to 125 to yourself. Determine who is talking. Look up when you are finished. Who is him in the first sentence? Who is saying this? Who is he in the second sentence? Who is saying this? It is important to identify the speaker and also track pronouns to the nouns they represent. Now I want you to reread the passage from the outsiders silently. When you have finished reading, look up so that I know we're ready to move on. Now we are going to check our comprehension of the passage by answering questions. Remember, questions consist of a variety of difficulty levels. Some are in the form of questions and some are in the form of prompts. Prompts are statements that require a constructed response, which can range from a list to a complete sentence to a paragraph or an essay. Look at the words on the board. I want you to read these words aloud with me. Describe, explain, tell, use. Turn to page 66 in your student books. It is critical to understand what the question is asking and how to answer it. Today we will review four direction words used in prompts. You will become more familiar with these question words and learn how to answer different types of questions. Now we're going to look over again at describe, explain, tell, and use. So look over those parts of the chart. Now we're going to check for understanding. When I give the sentence starter, I want you to finish the answer by completing the sentence. If the prompt asks you to describe, the response requires you to If the prompt asks you to explain, the response requires you to
if the prompt asked you to tell, the response requires you to If the prompt asks you to use, the response asks you to Now turn to page 89 in your student books again. Let's practice answering questions that are written as prompts. Listen as I model the first one for you. Number one, describe Pony Boy's family. How will we start our answer? According to the chart, if the prompt asks me to describe, I know I need to state detailed information about a topic. Now we need to turn the prompt into a question to confirm our understanding. The question would be, what is Pony Boy's family like? I remember that Pony Boy lives with his brothers Dairy and Soda Pop but I can't remember why or what they are like. I need to return to the text and find out the details since that is what I need to provide. On page 78, Pony Boy says, I remembered my mother, beautiful and golden like soda and wise and firm like dairy. Then on page 80, Tubit tells Pony Boy, you think you could get away with murder living with your big brother and all, but Derry's stricter with you than your folks were, ain't he? And Pony Boy says, Derry was too smart to be a greaser. I ain't chicken too, bit Matthews, and you know it, I said angrily. Ain't I a Curtis, same as Soda and Derry? On the last page, Pony Boy says, Soda Pop would have understood. Now I can combine all of those things to describe the family. First of all, I know that Pony Boy lives with Dairy and Soda Pop because his parents are dead. This is an inference because 2-Bit uses the past tense were and Pony Boy remembers his mom. Now I need to describe Dairy and Soda Pop since they are his family. I know that Dairy is smart and strict or wise and firm. I know that Soda Pop is beautiful and understanding. I also know that Pony Boy explains that he is not chicken because he is like his brothers. That means they are brave. So let me formulate my answer. So when I formulate my answer, I come up with Pony Boy's family consists of only his brothers because his parents are dead. Dairy is the oldest and is smart and strict. Soda Pop is beautiful and understanding. Both brothers are brave in a fight. And so now on page 89, I want you to fill in the answer for number one. Our second question is, tell the names of the greasers. If the prompt asks you to tell, what should you do? Now we need to turn the prompt into a question to confirm our understanding. If we change this into a question, what would the question be? Go ahead and tell me now. So we are simply stating the names of the greasers. Who do you remember from the text? So the way we want to frame this answer is blank, comma, blank, comma, blank, comma, blank, comma, blank, comma, and blank are greasers and then you're going to put the names in those blanks. So go ahead and complete item number two. Now I want you to complete items three through six. Look up when you have finished and are ready to go on.
After reading a text like this, we often form opinions of the characters. For instance, an opinion might be, Johnny's mom was mean and didn't love him. Sometimes it is hard to keep those opinions from popping up when we talk or write about the text. When we summarize text, it is important to write an objective summary, one free from our own opinions. So on the next slide, you're going to write an objective summary of the passage. You're going to tell the events that happened in the passage.